I want to welcome everybody to Bishop Conley High School here in Fall River, Massachusetts, the home of the Bristol Community College Bayhawks. All right, it's the Bristol Community College Lady Bayhawks taking on the Naval Academy Preparatory School, and we're getting set to tip this one off. The, the starting lineups have been announced. Mackenzie Thompson, number 33, getting the jump for BCC. And also number 23, Lindsay Llewellyn, wins the tip for the Naval Academy. And right off the bat... The Naval Academy will score. Number 11, Nia Silva with the put in. All right, so again, welcome everybody in here to Bishop Conley High School just for this new edition of Bayhawks basketball. We have a great doubleheader coming up for you here today. And a steal there by the Naval Academy. That's number 15, Daniel Hudson. The Naval Academy Prep School, of course, is in Newport, Rhode Island. Myself as a Navy man, proud to be watching the Naval Academy here today. Going against my alma mater, Bristol Community College. Should be a good one. All right, in the corner, jump shot by number 30. Faith Butler with the miss. Loose ball, put back attempt, no good, and Bristol will come up with it. Again, I'm David Cardoza on the call. want to welcome everybody in on a Thursday night. Live streaming on Facebook. Bristol coming into today's game with zero wins. That shot by Katia Luna is no good, way off. Early on, first quarter, 2-0. Naval Academy with the lead. One thing about the Naval Academy, one thing, they're going to be disciplined. They're going to they're going to be structured. They're going to be balanced. They're going to be well coached. There it is. And they get it into the interior, and it's going to be steps on number 50. So that's one thing you can cut on with the Naval Academy each and every single year. Katia Luna dribbles the ball up slow for BCC. That ball is going to be that's going to be a turnover. Seguin throws that, I don't know to who, to the to, to the Navy.
They're going to get it inside. Inside outside basketball around the perimeter. 13 on the shot clock. Navy doing a lot of passing, not a whole lot of shooting, a lot of unselfishness. Five on the shot clock. Jumper by Nia Silva at the elbow, no good. Rebounded by number 30, Faith Butler. Going to start a new shot clock for the Navy. All right, nice drive and a nice drive and lay in by number 30, Faith Butler. Nice strong move there. Nice take to the basket by Faith. Naval Academy in a 2 3 zone. Fourteen on the shot clock. Katia Luna puts it up for three and takes it home. Katia Luna from deep. Katia Luna obviously looking to shoot, looking to get established here early in the early going. Bristol only playing with five players today. They're missing their top player. Ten on the shot clock. Naval Academy likes to take it deep into the shot clock. Butler, the nice pass there. Lindsay Llewellyn can't connect, but the Naval Academy will come up with a rebound and start a new shot clock. So the Navy all over the, all over the boards, dominating here early. Not too much to show for it, though. Still 4-3. They look to get it inside to Abigail Pigeon, but it goes to her hands. Kind of a bad pass there, and it'll go out of bounds. All right, so, like, we're just getting going here, first quarter. Four 10-minute quarters in NJCAA women's basketball. All right, and there's a steal out of the zone. That's Nia Silva with the steal. Silva run the point. Navy prep continues looks to get it inside. And they have the height advantage, so I'm not sure what all this dribbling, what all this meaningless dribbling is for the, for the Naval for the naval prep in the corner the jumper no good had a good look did miss pigeon but can't connect Bristol playing a lot better on the defensive end it's been their Achilles heel this year they've allowed a lot of easy baskets and they, they've allowed the other team to get multiple chances multiple looks they, they haven't done well on the boards this year going to the free throw line right now in the game for the Navy prep is Krista Wheelock from Fredonia, New York. And as expected, you have the Naval Academy with players from all over the country. The Naval Prep School is obviously a preparatory school for Annapolis. For the Naval Academy in Annapolis, these are our future naval officers. It's the future of America, ladies and gentlemen. Naval Academy in 2-3 zone. But right now, Bristol hanging in there. Got to give them credit, 6-3. Three. Three-pointer, Luna. I like the release there. I like, their, I like her thought process right now. She, they, need, they need someone to step up today. They need someone who's going to step up offensively without their top player in there. Bristol in zone, 15 on the shot clock. This looks like it's going to be a low-scoring game. Both teams not looking to shoot. Around the perimeter they go. Three-point shot, up, no good. And that shot's rebounded by Stephanie Oliveira. And Bristol comes away with the rebound. Samantha Sino had open look there, but she couldn't connect. 15 on the shot clock. Seguin swings it. Luna thought about it. Nice fake. Goes into the teeth of the defense. Loses it. Katia Luna showed a lot of improvement on the offensive end as of late. and been, She's been way more aggressive. They're going to need her today. If they're going to pull out the victory. Again, Navy, Navy being unselfish. 
And Abigail Pigeon flashes high, tried to get it to Samantha Sunnell on the wing. Couldn't get to it. Bad pass there. Naval, Naval Academy turns the ball over. 6-3 early. Not a lot of scoring here. A lot of, a lot of passing, a lot of dribbling. Got to get something going towards the basket. If you're Bristol, you get a move. You get to go towards the ball. Luna, Luna going to shoot for three, gets it. Luna with the trifecta ties the game. How about that? Jumper by Llewellyn drains it. Nice short 14, 15-foot jumper. I'm sorry, that was Krista Wheelock. Krista Wheelock back up center from Fredonia, New York. She's on the board. Gives the Able Academy an 8-6 lead. Both teams playing zone. That's another deep shot by Luna. She gets it to go. That's three threes. They're going to need her today. Wow. How about that? Nine to eight. Bristol with the lead now. Inside. Nice post move. Can't get it. Follow up. Can't get it. Yeah, I have a feeling like Abigail Pigeon could impose her will down there all day. She hasn't been able to connect on a lot of shots down there. Bristol doing a good job on defense. And they're going to call a foul. And who that who they call that foul on? They're going to call that foul on number one, Sarah Seguin. And they're going to call a push off away from the ball. It's going to be a foul. Two team fouls on Bristol. Again, Bristol in zone. Again, thanks everybody for who's come out to watch this. Number 30, Faith Butler, no good. Goes after her own rebound. And I'm not sure what the referee called there. But the Naval Academy turns the ball over. No word on what that call was. Didn't catch that one, but Bristol with the ball. Katia Luna has, has accounted for all the points here for BCC, and they're going to call steps. They're going to call steps on Mackenzie Thompson. Mackenzie Thompson looked like she was in La La Land. Wasn't thinking about putting the ball to the floor. Hey, John on shot clock. Oh, they swing the ball to Sunnell. Back into the corner. Short jumper off the, using the glass. Can't get it to go. Nia Silva goes in there and, and mixes it up and gets the rebound. And they're going to start a new shot clock for the prep. Inside, nice bounce pass, nice entry pass. Krista Wheelock with the air ball. Still 10 on the shot clock. Ball didn't hit the rim. Silva floats it up in the lane, gets it to go. That gives the Naval Prep the lead, coming up on 113 to play here in the first quarter. 10-9. Gotta definitely gotta move it up the basketball. Seguin. They set a pick. Seven on the shot clock. Luna's gonna have to put it up. She drives, puts it up with the left hand. Almost got that one. Thing is, who else is going to step up for, for Bristol today? Oh, Wheelock cut into the basket. Number 23, Lindsay Llewellyn. Lindsay Llewellyn back into the game. Wheelock puts it to the floor, goes to her left. Can't get it to go. The putback by Abigail Pigeon. The forward, the five foot nine forward from Archball, Pennsylvania. With the deuce. And the Naval Academy again back up by three. Bristol should look for the final shot here of the quarter. Luna, again coming to set a pick. Luna from way deep, Curry land, and just a little bit short. Four seconds, gonna go up and stop ball. 
You're going to go up stop ball at half court. Silva's going to have a chance to get in the lane. Three-pointer at the buzzer. No good. Lindsay Llewellyn couldn't connect. All right, and at the end of one, Bristol playing tough, playing hard. They're within three. At the end of the first quarter, 12-9, to nine, the Naval Prep has the lead. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Brianna, and this is my mom, Virginia. My mom always dreamed about going to college, but with a full-time job and a family, I don't think she ever thought she could. Thanks to Bristol Community College, she was able to go to school on weekends, online, and close to home. Now she has a degree with very little student debt, and I can keep dancing. Now is the time to get the education you deserve. Your dreams are within reach at Bristol Community College. Hi everyone, I'm Ed Cabellan, one of the new vice presidents here at Bristol. In my first year working here at the college, I'm curious about your student experience. Because of that, I'll be holding open office hours every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. and from 5 to 6 p.m. to hear all about your experiences, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. At Fall River, I'm in G225. For those of you at other locations in Attleboro, New Bedford, and Taunton, don't worry, I'll be coming out to visit you all as well. I look forward to meeting with you. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Heidi. I'm a liberal arts humanity transfers major and I am a student social media ambassador for BCC. The social media ambassador program to me is being able to reach out to other students and potential students. Welcome back to Conley. All right, so first quarter action. Bristol holding their own, and Bristol playing out, playing without a key player. Katera James, okay, the promising young freshman who's been one of the top leaders in each category for Bristol Community College this year. Um, she is the primary ball handler. She is their leading scorer. Katera James is out with an injury today. Now, the last time we were here, Katera James... Seemed to, seemed to have got hurt. I'm not sure if that was the injury that is to be talked about, but um, she's not in attendance here today with her. And the way that Katia Luna is shooting, I mean, that's the, that's the one-two punch for Bristol. So missing Katera James, not only does it weaken the bench as we get underway here in the second quarter, and they're going to call steps on Lindsay Llewellyn. Yeah, so missing James here today, that's big. That's tough because now... And what, what is going on here? Now Bristol playing with four? Bristol playing with four players now. So we have, an, we have Bristol playing with four players, and this is news to me because the end of the first quarter, with five players on the court, Luna, and they're going to call a foul. I think they're going to call a foul at number 23, Lewinsky Llewellyn. Okay, so it appears as though number 20, Stephanie Oliveira, is on the bench, and she's holding her knee over there on the end of the bench right now. So Bristol playing with four players, and that's a shame because they're hanging in this one. It's going to be tough to, to hold this the way that it is. I mean... Tough enough to play with five players is constituted. And going back the other way and landed it in off the turnover is Lindsay Llewellyn. And now the Naval Academy has their largest lead. Tough luck for Tough luck for for Bristol. I mean, you've been hanging in this one. You're without your best player. You're without your leading scorer. And, you know, Cocktail Luna has been heating it up, and here's another turnover. And this one might get ugly pretty soon. Laying it in off the pass from Llewellyn is number 15, Daniel Hudson from Summitville, Indiana. Five foot three guard. This one might get out of hand real quick. And it was so close. I'm not sure what happened to Stephanie Oliveira, but she's on the end of the bench. The trainer's talking to her, so hopefully she can return to action. That's a deep three, and it almost went in. Holy cow. From no man's land, that almost went in. 
by Stephanie McKenzie. And on the other end, Lindsay Llewellyn, she is heating it up for the Naval Academy. 18-9. Bristol's had some worse beatdowns than this. That's why I'm saying it's too bad that Katera James isn't playing today. And now that's a deep three. Luna can't get it to fall. Luna might just start to have to chuck, chuck up threes. Nice block there by Llewellyn. Llewellyn getting it done for on both sides of the court. Lindsay Llewellyn's a six foot forward. Get her is listed as a guard too. I mean, she definitely can shoot from the outside, has a little bit of handle, skill. And she, she hails from Port Deposit, Maryland. She could see herself in Annapolis in the future. And there's going to be a timeout on the floor. Bristol will call timeout. Bristol down 18-9, also down one player. Bristol down to four players with 7.38 left to play in the first quarter. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Brianna, and this is my mom, Virginia. My mom always dreamed about going to college. But with a full-time job and a family, I don't think she ever thought she could. Thanks to Bristol Community College, she was able to go to school on weekends, online, and close to home. Now she has a degree with very little student debt. And I can keep dancing. Now is the time to get the education you deserve. Your dreams are within reach at Bristol Community College. All right, everybody, welcome back to Bishop Connolly High School in Fall River, home of the Bayhawks. You're watching Bristol Community College. Bayhawks basketball here on FR Media, live streaming on Facebook. And right now it's 18 to 9. Bristol had Bristol had called timeout. And if you're just joining us, Bristol now playing with four players. They have Katera James, their leading scorer who's out, out of today's game with an injury. And Bristol had just suffered an injury to uh, Miss Stephanie Oliveira. And she it's an undisclosed injury. She is holding her knee. And now Bristol is playing with four players. It was a 12 to nine game at the end of the first quarter. Bristol did, did finish the quarter. And it appears as though, all right, well, it's good. Looks like Stephanie's gonna go out there and give it a, give it a whirl. Not sure what was going on. She appears fine. I have no idea what's going on, but tis the season. So as I was saying, it was 12-9. Nice little drop step and into the paint. Faith Butler, a nice entry pass by Silva. And it's a 20-9 lead. It's a shame because Bristol was hanging in there. They even had a 9-8 lead at one point in the first quarter. And there's another steal. And again, Bristol, Bristol was doing a lot better job of protecting the basketball. And that's another steal by Lindsey Llewellyn. They'll get it into the post, and they're going to call a foul. Mackenzie Thompson in the post. And actually, they're going to call a foul on. It appears as though they're going to call a foul on uh, Abigail Pigeon. Or are they going to call a foul away from the ball on Lindsey Llewellyn? But it doesn't matter because the Naval Academy is going to get the basketball back. All right, these young midshipmen. Midshipmen to be. Gets into the corner. The Naval Academy does a good job of shifting the defense. That jumper is no good. I was going to say, Naval Academy does a good job of shifting the defense with their ball movement. Forcing Bristol to be sharp on their rotations defensively. And there's another steal. And a loose ball. And they're going to keep it here. Wow. Lindsay Llewellyn has such active, great hands. She's taken the ball out of Bristol's hands. She's literally done that a couple times where she's just, just like taking it away. Like taking candy away from a baby. She's like, give me that. Oh, off the inbound pass. Nice play. Had the right look. Mackenzie Thompson couldn't. Oh, I don't know why Llewellyn stopped. <laughs> she, she gave Bristol a chance to, to catch up. Nice pass. 
to Samantha, to Samantha Sunnell, who finished it. And right now, Lindsay Llewellyn is she's really stepping her game up. Twenty-two to nine. Five forty-two to go to the half. It's a game though. Look, look, look at look at Llewellyn. Luna for three. Going to come up short. Rebound, and they're going to call a foul. They're going to call a foul on Oliveira. And it looks like she is running with a limp. She's running with a slight limp, so. Good to see that, though. She has a little bit of injury, but she's trying to fight through it. Kudos to her. In the corner, off the swing, it's good. Splash. Llewellyn, LL. She's feeling it, 24 to nine. Getting it done on both ends. And they're gonna call travel. And they're gonna call travel on Kaitlyn Silva. Another turnover, another Bristol turnover. And just like I said, midship, midshipmen. They are starting to blow this one open. Silva with the basketball in the corner. Llewellyn wide open for three. Trains it. LL. Lindsay Llewellyn. And just like that, it's 27 9. And the NAP, the Naval Academy Prep, they are on a 19 0 run. It was 9-8, Bristol had the lead. Samantha Sunnell looking for Llewellyn. Back to Sunnell, 4-3, got it. Three threes in a row for the prep, 29-9. 21-0 run, blowing Bristol out the gym. So again, sets a pick. Thompson getting collapsed on by three midshipmen. Lazy air ball there. In the game now. In the game now with the basketball. That's number three, Branielle Carrillo. We haven't seen her yet. She's five foot ten from Aberdeen, Maryland. A couple young ladies from Maryland here at the Naval Academy. Close to Annapolis, where the Naval Academy school is. Okay, Naval Academy looks to be in a 1-2-2 zone. Coming up to defend is Nia Silva at the top. Luna thought about it, and oh, two quick feet there. Too bad she traveled there. She had, a, she had the right thought. She's doing a better job. And I'm talking about Katia Luna, number 24, in her second year. She was a starter last year for a lot of the year for Bristol. And... Uh, She's a very good three-point shooter. Moved her feet too quick, but she's doing a good job of doing some up fakes, getting her own, creating her own shot. Sunnell gets into the paint. Bristol with good D, three-pointer, it's good. Branielle Carrillo. I think that's four threes in a row for the Naval Academy, and they are just putting it to the Bayhawks right now. Believe it or not, it was 9-8 to eight not too long ago. And another steal. Sunnell comes up with it. You got to—I mean, you got to give it to Bristol. So many times in the last few years, they've had to play with only five players. Twelve on the shot clock. They'll swing it around. Silva directed traffic gets it in the corner. Carrillo for three. Nice arc. And there's finally a miss. From behind the arc, but a rebound. Keeping it alive, Abigail Pigeon. Pigeon flashes up high, gets it back out to Sunnell. He'll dump it in. Nice ball movement in the interior. No good. And ball didn't hit the rim, so it's going to stay Navy prep ball. Stop, 
And they're going to call a foul on Katia Luna. That's her first. Both teams staying out of foul trouble. New shot clock. Driving to the hole. Sunnell back out. Mia Silva for three. It's good. And they're going to count it as a two. Her foot was on the line. But that ball was from deep. Make no mistake about it. And the Naval Academy showing, showing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. 34 to 9. Bristol has not scored since about halfway through the first quarter. Katia Luna puts it up for three, way off, wide right. Minute 18 to play. Bristol in zone. Kick it back out. They'll get it inside. They collapse in the inside. They kick it back out. Boy, Naval Academy does a great job. It's like everybody's touching the basketball in each possession. Carrillo for three from the top, and it's good. Referee puts his hands up, and that's the three by number three, Branio Carrillo. And it is 37 to 9. Zero run. Luna somehow gets into the paint. Oh, they had a good look there. Mackenzie Thompson, I think she's going to get fouled there. And they're going to call it on Christ Krista Wheelock. Five foot eight forward. Oh, try to get into the corner and. Thompson in the corner. Looks like she got hit in the face there. Loose ball. Try to throw it in the backcourt. Nia Silva gets it. No good. Samantha, Samantha Sunnell gets the rebound. And the Naval Prep will be able to hold for the final shot. They'll kick it back out. Carrillo, cross-court pass. Shifting the defense. Two seconds in the paint. Nia Silva, it counts. Referee says it counts, and that is it. How about that? 39-9 to nine here at the half. It was 9-8 to eight, about halfway through the first quarter, and the Naval Academy has been on a 31-zip run to close out the half, 39-9. to nine. So we're going to take a break here. It's halftime here at Bishop Conley High School in Fall River. We're going to take a break here on our live stream, but please come back in about 12 minutes to join us 39 to 9, the Naval Academy prep with the lead over BCC. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Bristol basketball, Bristol Bayhawks basketball here at Bishop Connolly High School, the home of the Bristol Community College Bayhawks at the half, 39 to 9. The Naval Academy Preparatory School has a huge lead. Now, it was 9-8. to eight. It was nip and tuck for a little bit. Both teams weren't, um, weren't imposing their will. Were kind of just seemed like they were just fill, filling each other out for about those first five or six minutes. And the Naval Academy, I mean, the Bristol Community College was hanging right in there with the Naval Prep School. And it was 9-8. to eight. Bristol actually had the lead. Katia Luna had three three-pointers, and she accounts for all nine points because Bristol Community College had the lead nine to eight about halfway through that first quarter. You know, they were fighting. and um, But ever since then, another quarter and a half has been played, and 31 unanswered points by the Naval Academy Prep School, you know, since that point. So Bristol has obviously a lot of work to do to try to get back into this one. But Bristol also... Suffering from a couple losses here today. First was Katera James, who didn't even make, who's not even in attendance today. Katera James, the young freshman, um, the young promising freshman for for Bristol. She is not here. She's out with an injury, and also going down at the end of the first quarter was Stephanie Oliveira. She went out with an injury, and Bristol had to play with four players for a little bit, and she's back in the game now. I mean, she's back. 
She's been back playing since then, but Bristol had to play with four players for a little bit, and the Navy took advantage of that. It was 12 to nine at the end of the first quarter, and the Naval Academy took advantage of that man, that woman advantage, that one man down, that one woman down, and uh, they had themselves a comfortable lead. Lindsay Llewellyn, number 23, has been a star here today for the Naval Academy. She's the leading scorer for them. She hails from Port Deposit, Maryland. Look, look for her. She put on an offensive and defensive show. Naval Academy coached by Karen Byrne right there. Seems to have her team together. Very well coached, very unselfish team. And nice, nice defensive play. Nice defensive play there by Mackenzie Thompson on the first possession by the Naval Prep. Let's see if Bristol can get back on the board and end this 31 to zero run that Naval Academy ended the half with. And careless with the basketball and that's what happens. Can't be careless, another turnover. Bristol been playing in that two three zone all game. Llewellyn back to Nia Silver at the top, back to Llewellyn. They get it inside. They do a good job of getting the ball inside. No good. Llewellyn falls it. Faith Butler had a good look inside. Both Faith Butler and as well as Abigail Pigeon have done a good job of establishing position on the interior. Llewellyn has good stroke from the outside, good stroke from the free throw line. 40 to nine, so the uh, the run is 32. We're just getting underway here. Thank you to everybody who's joined us on the Facebook live stream. Llewellyn missed her second free throw. Just driving strong to the basket. And she's done it in a myriad of ways. Driving to the basket, getting steals. Getting other teammates involved. She's hit from the outside. She's on her game. Eight and a half to play in the third. Another, another careless pass. Luna saves that one before it goes out of bounds. And a steal by Llewellyn. Gets it to the passing lane. And she'll just... Kick it back out. Probably could have scored. She's doing a good job of getting other players involved. Llewellyn gets it inside. Kicking it back out as Pigeon. Seven on the shot clock. Sometimes I think the Navy, the future midshipman, oh, at the buzzer, no good. And she gets her own rebound, so they're going to say that she got her shot off. Ball hit the rim. And they're going to count that. Faith Butler for two, 44 to 9. Midshipman in zone. 10 on the shot clock. Another Llewellyn gets her Llewellyn gets her hands on another ball, causing a turnover. Pigeon kicks it back out to Silva. Thirteen on the shot clock. Llewellyn gets to the paint, kicks it back out. And they're gonna, it's going to be a turnover. I want to say, uh, I want to say there's a kick ball. Forty-four to nine. Luna from deep three, no good. I think the one thing with Katya, what she's got to do, I mean, sometimes she gets that ball out there from way out there, she's chucking it. She would suit herself a lot better, take a couple dribbles in. 
And get a little bit of a closer shot. She's shooting away out there like she's Steph Curry. Although sometimes she'll connect, but not a, not a high percentage shot. But I guess when you're down 44-9, to nine, anything goes. Hands to the paint. Scooting and dooting. Carrillo dumps it inside. Nice pass. Nice entry pass to Abergain. Wheelock with the rebound and another shot clock. Another new shot clock. Naval Academy doing a great job on the board today. They're going to call travel on Branyel Carrillo. All right. Approaching the halfway mark for this third quarter. Bristol just not doing too many things towards the basket. Luna trying to get aggressive. She gets her shot blocked by Pigeon. Here's Carrillo. 17 on the shot clock. Look at Naval Academy. They know, they know exactly where they're supposed to be. Pigeon, the jumper is good. Well, 17-foot jumper, wide open. Nothing but net, pretty shot. 46-9. to nine. <laughs> Coach Karen Burns still, still coaching. 46-9. Still instructing, still coaching. Still holding her, still holding her, her young midshipman. Accountable. I think everything the Naval Academy Prep School is doing looks a lot. It's just so much more smoother, obviously, than Bristol. Everything's a lot more crisp. The movements are so much more crisp. The passing. They know where they're supposed to be. They know their plays. We're going to take a timeout here. And they're... 30 second timeout. I guess we'll keep it here. 46 to 9 is the score. And man, the, the run at the Naval Prep School has, has been on. Still going. 38 0 run. 9 to 8. Bristol had the lead in the first quarter. About halfway through that first quarter, Bristol was hanging in there. It was 12 to 9. At the end of the first quarter, and now we're here in the third quarter, it's 46 to 9. So a big, big turn of events. Okay, so we have a double header today. So the, the men's team come in to tonight's game at 8 o'clock. They won't be facing Naval Prep School. They'll be facing Northern Essex in their game. The Bristol Community College men's team is undefeated. They are the number nine team, the number ninth ranked team in the country. So you will watch that tonight. Stay tuned for the second half of this Bristol Bayhawks doubleheader here on the Thursday. Seguin going to call, going to call steps. Naval Prep School doing such a great job defensively. And Bristol really hasn't had an answer. They rode Katia Luna for a little bit, and when she went cold, that's been that. I think with Katera James, I think it would be a lot different game. I think this game would still be close. You'd have another girl, another girl that could generate offense. And that's been something that's been tough for Bristol today. That, that ball just moving. Sagil gets it. They get that ball movement. They get the they get the open shot. It's such an unselfish. It's such an unselfish team. They move that ball and whoever's open. They find the open player. And there's another loose ball. And another turnover by Bristol. 48 to 9. Nia Silva in the open court. She'll pull it back out. 
Naval Academy has done a great job of, I mean, they could they could really blow this one open, but they've really, and they're going to call steps. They're going to call steps on Pigeon. Down low. They use that pivot foot. 48 to 9. Kudos to the Naval Academy for maintaining that defensive effort. And that's another ball that's going to go out of bounds. Luna, and she'll step out of bounds. Yeah, as, long as, as long as Bristol, as long as they don't have the, the woman power, if you will. Only five players, Katera James, out of this game. They did have seven players to start the year at the elbow. Jumper is good. Couple more for a pigeon. And she comes right up to the elbow, and no one's gotten her. She can make that shot. She's done a good job today. 15 to 9. That's a deep shot by Katia Luna trying to end this run. No good. I think now it's just stay tuned to see if Bristol will score again because they might not. And wouldn't that be something? Because earlier in the season, first game of the season against Massasoit, Bristol lost 111 to 10. Imagine if they lost lost today and thinking they were thinking they were in this game, they were winning this game. Nine to eight. Imagine if they imagine if they lost today with only nine points. And the putback is there by Carrillo on the offensive rebound. Naval Prep School just dominating the boards. They're getting second and third chances. Bristol giving up a lot of height, giving up a lot of size to Naval Academy. So now this has become a blow, a huge blowout. Luna trying to go in aggressively, gets her shot blocked by Carrillo. Or it might have been Pigeon, I'm not sure, but Carrillo comes up with it. Coming up on a minute to play in the third quarter. Mercifully for Bristol. Look at the ball inside. Silva doing a good job from the point with those entry passes. Carrillo can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Pigeon, and now just look how balanced this team is. Talking about the naval prep side. I mean, you see Llewellyn who took over and took over early on in the game. And now this has been Pigeon's quarter. She's been all over it. And another steal. Talking speak of the devil. Abigail Pigeon. She's been getting blocked shots. She's been getting into the passing lane. Active hands. She's shown the range on her jumper. Post presence. It's a good team. Nia Silva, the, the floor general. And Bristol, you did, if you're Bristol, you got to be tired. I mean, you got to feel for them. you got to be tired. You're only playing at the buzzer. That's going to end the third quarter. And the score is 54 to 9. So, and we're going to keep it here. It looks like there's a foul. Hasn't been too many of those, by the way. Three team fouls. And the visiting Naval Prep School, zero team fouls. They've had barely any fouls in this game. It's four team fouls now for the third quarter. But, I mean, you haven't, we haven't seen too many, too much physicality. We haven't seen too many fouls in this game. 54-9. to nine, They put five seconds, actually, on the, on the clock. And number 24, Krista Wheelock is at the free throw line. And that free throw will bounce up and out. And now they're going to put point .5. Okay, that's more like it. Point .5 left on the clock, so. Wheelock, second free throw, drains it home. And I don't think Bristol's going to get a shot off. And they'll inbound, 
Kalen Silva inbounds to Katia Luna, and that will do it for the third quarter. So 55 to 9. Do a little fuzzy math here. Naval Academy on a 47 to 0 run. 55 to 9 at the end of three. We'll take this timeout and uh, deliver this message. Hi, I'm Brianna, and this is my mom, Virginia. My mom always dreamed about going to college, but with a full-time job and a family, I don't think she ever thought she could. Thanks to Bristol Community College, she was able to go to school on weekends, online, and close to home. Now she has a degree with very little student debt, and I can keep dancing. Now is the time to get the education you deserve. Your dreams are within reach at Bristol Community College. All right, getting ready for the start of the fourth quarter. You're watching Bayhawks basketball here on FR Media, streaming on Facebook. I welcome in our Facebook audience. Thanks you for watch, thank you for watching the live stream. Be here for the Bristol men's team. Coming up after this game, around 8 o'clock, they'll be taking on Northern Essex Community College in a Region 21, in a NJCAA Region 21 matchup. The undefeated Bristol Community College Bayhawks look to extend their winning streak to start out the gate this season. And they are the number nine team in the country. So we, we should uh, stay tuned for that. All right, as Bristol storms towards the uh, the Christmas break. Another week left before finals. Thank God. 55 and 9. And then we'll take a little break here in the next couple of weeks before we resume again in January. So Bristol's going to have the basketball. And the story of the game is... Bristol only with nine points, but they have not scored since the first quarter. The last basket was by Katya Luna, who has all nine points, three three-pointers. The last three-pointer she hit gave Bristol a 9-8 to eight lead. And ever since then, Naval Academy took a 10-9 lead, and they have not looked back since. They are way out, way out in front. Took that lead, and... Never even look back in the rearview mirror. Forty-seven to zero run. So that's what I mean. That's the thing to watch right now. It's the only thing to watch right now in this game. We'll see it. We'll see over under. And they're going to call a push off on uh, Starris again. They're going to call a foul away from the basketball, and that's her third foul. And we're just getting underway here in the fourth quarter. And again, Naval Academy has looked like a well-oiled machine. Smooth, well-oiled machine. They weren't so out the gate, though. They weren't out the gate. Bristol was playing tough. But I think you just get tired. You don't have people to substitute. You're just going to get tired. Naval Academy all over the boards. And they're just tiring out. I mean, they're tiring Bristol out. They're tiring that zone out. That ball movement has really tired them out. That's what you do. That's great coaching, too. Nia Silva, jumper in the lane. No good. And they're going to call it Bristol basketball. Good defense by Bristol on that one. Not sure if they call it travel or what, but Bristol's had their moments. Katia Luna will dump it in way over Thompson's head. Man. Bristol doesn't have much to work with on the offensive end. And you can just see physically they're tired. Naval Academy has a long bench. Playing well. I like Nia Silver. I think she's such a great floor general. She puts people in the right spots. Uh, 
obviously unselfish. Driving into the lane, puts it up. The runner is good. Nia Silva does a great job of just picking her spots. Like I said, she's unselfish. She's more of a distributor, more of a facilitator from the point guard position. But she knows right when to drive to the hole or take her shot. But most of the time she's looking for others. But right there, she drives into the lane. And I just like her game. Nia Silva. Three-pointer. Luna hucks it up there. Another miss for her. Started off so hot, Katia Luna. She's such a hot and cold shooter, though. I'm talking about Katia. And she's been cold since those first early on moments. Five on the shot clock. Sunil up to the top of the key. Pigeon, will they get it? Will count if it goes. No good. Sunil goes up with it, and she gets fouled. All right, Sunel at the line for two. She misses the first one. Second free throw, way off. Loose ball, going to go Bristol way. Knocked out of bounds, looked like by Krista Wheelock. Coming up on seven minutes to play, 57-9. I think even though the Naval Academy has the Naval Academy prep school, even though they get this huge lead, hasn't been too much of a huge offensive display. We've seen teams come in here and score 100. Three-pointer by Katia Luna ends the run. Boy. And Bristol will not leave here with their lowest to point total of the season. Katia Luna accounts for all 12 points. Now the question is, will anybody else score for Bristol? Katia, when she gets her stroke going, that shot looks pretty. Got a good rotation on the ball. Silva over to Sunel in the corner. Cross court, no good. Rebound. And shot clock violation. Going to be Bristol basketball. So that ends a 40 set, no, a 49 to 0 run. That last Katia Luna three pointer. Giving Bristol double figures. They have 12 now. Their first point since the first quarter. Wow. Luna stops and pops. Jumper. It's good. Katia Luna starting to heat up now. She can hit that shot. She has all 14 points. Bristol in zone. I think it's easy to say. I think it's going to be easy to say who the Bristol, who the Bayhawk player of the game is. Five on the shot clock. Cross court pass. Scooting to the basket. Nice little jump, jump step. No good. Rebounded by Pigeon. Lays it up and in. 59 to 14. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everybody. We're approaching that. Starting to look a lot like Christmas out there in the city. City of Fall River, the lights and parade last week and Barry Pointer, no good. Just give it to Katia Luna and let her shoot. No one else is shooting it for Bristol. Has anyone else even taken a shot for Bristol besides I think Stephanie Oliveira had a couple had a shot attempt or two. Sarah Seguin had an attempt. Other than that, who's taking shots for Bristol? Silva with a jumper. Connects. 61 to 14. What are we doing in practice if you're Bristol? I mean, 
I think everyone else looks, I mean, looks offensively inept right now. If you're coach over there, what are you coaching? I mean, you're not even, I mean, you're not even saying a word. I think one of your jobs as a coach is to motivate. I mean, you're not even, I mean, what are you doing over there? Motivate, direct traffic. Your your girls are out of obviously out of position a lot of times. They're not boxing out. You gotta coach these girls up if you're a coach. There we go. There we go. Must have heard me. And that off the in <laughs> that off the inbound pass. That happened so quick, I'm not even sure. Was that Sunell? 63 to 14. Katia Luna. Katia Luna keeps she get, keeps getting collapsed on every time. That's a three-pointer. Had what she wanted. Good look at it, but just couldn't get it to go. 63 to 14, coming up on three minutes to play. Like I said, Naval Academy has done a great job all day of moving without the basketball. Helping out. Silva gets it at the top of the key. Boy, she's had a sneaky good game just all around, especially on the offensive end. Nia Silva. Promising young future for these young mid, future midshipmen. 65 14. Well, it's been a 57 to 5 run since the first quarter. Since about halfway through the first quarter now. Under two minutes to play to dump it in. Back out. Collier. Three pointer, no good. I'm sorry, Carrillo. Pounded inside. Naval Academy is still running their offense. They do do a good job of it, though. I mean, nice. Get the shot they wanted. Carrillo did a good job cutting into the paint. Pigeon did a great job of finding her, but they can't connect. But that's been a story all day for the Naval Academy. I mean, they've been – Thompson, three-pointer, no good. Well, she was wide open. Had a good look, good release, too strong. Coming up under a minute to play. Navy prep. Going to walk out here with a victory, go back to Newport. And it'll be carry on. Nice pass. Getting inside to Pigeon. We haven't seen Lindsay Llewellyn. I mean, she's out of the game now, and she's been out of the game for a little while, and Thompson chucks it up there. No good. Nice offensive, re nice defensive rebound there by Sunell getting the position down low. Navy Prep has done a great job on the boards. 67 to 14. Winding down here. All right, and that's going to be it. 67 to 14, the Navy Prep with a huge victory today over the Bristol Community College Lady Bayhawks. And that's going to do it here.
Thank you, everybody, for watching on our live stream as we live stream here from Bishop Connolly High School, home of the Bayhawks. And that's going to be it. Our Bayhawks player of the game is going to go to Katia Luna, who accounted for all 14 points for the Lady Bayhawks. So stay tuned, everybody, for the Bristol Community College men's Bayhawks team, the ninth-ranked team in the country, going against Northern Essex. All right, again, everybody, I'm David Cardoza. The Naval Prep School walks into Bristol, and they are going back to Newport. Winners, anchors away, everybody. The Naval Prep School beats Bristol Community College here today. Stay tuned for the Bristol Community College men's Bayhawks team. I'm David Cardoza. Have a good night.